So you've just spunked your life savings and probably sold a kidney or two in order to snaffle yourself one of Apple's latest trouser fillers, the iPhone 16 Pro or iPhone 16 Pro Max. Congratulations, hope it's worth all of that dialysis shenanigans. And now you're thinking to yourself, hey, what does this massive jobby that I've got stashed in my pants actually do? Well, you've come to the right place. Here's my iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max tips and tricks guide to help you get the most out of your shiny, expensive new slab. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, first up, a quick tip if you've gone and snagged yourself that massive 6.9 inch Pro Max. You'll probably want to save your thumbs some unnecessary torture by turning on the one-handed mode. So what you'll need to do is head to the iPhone's settings, go to accessibility, then give touch a poke and make sure that reachability is switched on. And when that's active, you should be able to just swipe down on the bottom edge of your iPhone and then everything gets dragged down so you're not having to reach all the way up to the very top of this enormous display. So last year's big iPhone upgrade was of course that action button, but for this generation of iPhone, the big new upgrade is another button, but on the other side. Ooh. Now by default, if you give this a push in at any point, it will automatically load the camera app. However, if you find you're constantly mashing this by accident or you just wanna change it up, no worries, dive back into the settings and go to camera, and then camera control is up at the top. You can change how you launch the camera either with a single click of that button or a double click. And while you don't have as much customization as the old action button, you can at least change it up so it loads up the code scanner or the magnifier if you don't want to load up the camera. Or you can just disable it entirely if you don't want to use it at all. But seeing as how this is one of the only proper upgrades here on the iPhone 16 Pro Max, why did you even buy this phone? Hopefully Apple will allow us to customize that camera button more in the future. But in the meantime, if you want to jump into specific camera features quickly, just go to the shortcuts app. You've got a whole bunch of options here, including the likes of portraits, selfies, videos, etc. You can just add a shortcut to that to the home screen, change up the icon, the color, etc, etc. You can even select a specific symbol for it and just tap add. And boom, we've got a shortcut right there on the desktop. Anyhow, we've quick loaded the camera with a tap of that new camera control button. In the future, in an update, apparently you'll be able to lightly tap this camera control button in order to focus on a particular subject. For now, you're just gonna have to tap on the screen as usual. And now if we fully push in the button again, we will take a photo. Alternatively, you can push and hold it in in order to start recording a video, but note that you'll actually have to hold it in. You can't remove your finger, otherwise that stops recording. Sadly, there doesn't seem to be any way of changing this up, so a long press of that camera button takes a burst shot instead, which anyone who has kids will know is a very handy feature indeed. Again, hopefully Apple will chuck that in in a future update. Now, of course, with previous iPhones, if you wanted to zoom a bit into your subject, you had to, you know, use your thumbs like this. Quite an archaic system, really, whereas now you can just lightly tap this camera button. Don't push it all the way in, because that will actually take a photo. And then you can slide your finger across the surface in order to zoom in and out. So remember, just a light tap until you feel the haptic feedback, and then you're good to go. Now, see you lightly double tap that camera button, you will bring up a bunch of different camera features and modes. So for instance, you can quickly change up the exposure, again, just by sliding your finger across that surface. Otherwise, you can also change up the depth of field, choose between various shooting styles, and you've also got that tone mode, Again, just changes up the brightness and the contrast. When you're in the video mode, you will apparently eventually be able to change like the resolution and video related features, but for now it's just the same options as the camera mode. And apparently when Apple Intelligence finally appears, you'll be able to long press that camera button when the phone is hibernating in order to quick launch into the Apple Intelligence mode. Be able to do a quick search on a cafe or restaurant to bring up the opening times, etc, etc. So that for now at least is the fresh new camera control button, but more camera tips and tricks in a bit. Now, if you happen to skip the iPhone 15 generation, you'll certainly want to get acquainted with that action button. I've got mine set up, so long pressing it will automatically load up Shazam to identify any music that's playing. But naturally, you can fully customize this by diving into the settings, Let's get out of the camera controls. You'll see the action button option tucked away there in the main settings. You've got quite a few different options to choose from, so by default it will activate the silent mode. You can also have it turn on the focus mode, quick load the camera, a bit pointless now you've got that dedicated camera button of course. Load up the torch, all kinds of different stuff. 
And if there's nothing in here you're tempted by, you can have it actually quick load one of your shortcuts. So you can have it load up your favorite app or dive straight into a feature within your favorite app. And speaking of apps, God bless you iOS 18 because now you can finally move your apps towards the bottom end of the screen. They don't have to be all wedged up towards the top. They're saving your thumb from lots of uncomfortable and unnecessary stretching. Huzzah! That only took almost 17 years. And you can also now make all of your icons the same color. So you want distracted by bright, bold, distinctive logos. And this is genuinely useful. It means certainly I'm a lot less likely to tap on a social media app and waste loads of my life just doom scrolling when all I wanted to do is just quickly check the train times or the weather or something. All you need to do is long press on a spare bit of desktop space, then head to edit up in the top left corner there and then customize. You'll see a wee menu pop up at the bottom for customization. So you can choose between small and large icons. And you can also change up between different themes, including light, dark, automatic and tinted. I actually quite like the default sort of tealy color that comes up quite moody. You can change this up if you like, make them a bit green, yellow, red, whatever hue you fancy, basically. And on your iPhone 16 Pro or Pro Max, you can also lock an app. So you require a bit of Face ID or a password in order to access it. This could be quite handy, for instance, if you've got any dodgy stuff lurking in your photos gallery. Not that you would. Naturally, you're a saint. None of that trouserial picture nonsense for you. And this is dead easy to set up. All you need to do is long press on an app until the Wii menu pops up and then you'll see the new require face ID option. And this will actually scan your face when you activate it just to make sure you are absolutely you. And then nobody else who doesn't have your face can access your stuff. And if you've got an app installed on your iPhone 16 Pro or Pro Max that you maybe don't want your family to find out, like say a dating app that your wife might be upset to discover, well just long press on it and then tap require face ID and you'll see there is a hide and require face ID option. Just give this a wee poke. You'll have to verify that it's you again and then tap hide app and as you'll see it'll disappear from sight. To find it again, just swipe along into your app library, scroll to the bottom and you'll see a hidden folder and you'll just need to scan your mug to show that it's you and then up pops the icon. And you may notice on your iPhone 16 Pro Max that the old control center has changed up here in iOS 18. It's now easier than ever to customize. Again, just long press on any spare bit. You can not only delete any shortcuts that you don't need, so bye-bye calculator. You can also expand some sections and of course completely rearrange them and bring in any bits that you don't already have stuffed in there. Lots to choose from, so really good stuff. And don't forget you can also customize the other control center sections too. Also Safari is now more helpful than ever here on the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max. So say you're in a really busy, annoying website that you wanna read, but you've got all these pop-ups and adverts and other annoying tittery. Well, no bother, just tap this wee symbol down here next to the address bar and you'll see there's a short reader option. And this then kicks those annoying distractory bits right in the crotch. Great stuff again, absolutely essential feature. And to have this activate automatically, which I recommend, go to settings, scroll down to apps, and then head to Safari, right down there. Scroll all the way down to the reader section and then tap reader, and then have that turn on for all websites. And if that reader icon is accompanied by a little star symbol, that means you'll be able to drag out highlights from a website so it can just summarize an article for you, save you having to, you know, spend 45 seconds of your real life time scrolling through all of it when you just get the bullet point version. And next up, battery life, always a bit of a contentious topic when it comes to iPhones. So here's some tips and tricks to prevent your pocket brick from dying on you before you face plant your pillow at night. First of all, it'll be really helpful to actually know how much battery life you've got remaining at any given point, right? For some reason, this isn't active by default, but just tap the battery settings. And then as you can see there, up at the very top, the first option, battery percentage. And while you're in the settings menu, you should also make sure that only essential apps have access to your location. So scroll down until you find a privacy and security and then dive on into location services and just remove any bits that have cropped up in there that you don't need because that can drain your battery. And I would also recommend as a handy battery life tip going back into that shortcuts app. And what you want to do is give this automations tab a wee poke and then new automation. And this allows you to set up an automation that automatically turns on the battery power saver mode. 
This is very handy if you are running on dregs to so tap battery level and then falls below 50%. 50% is a bit early to turn on the low power mode. So just drag the slider to the left to around sort of 15, 20%. And I prefer leaving it on run after confirmation so it throws a little pop up in your face but you can just have it run immediately if you want with a little notification if you like. So that's our when condition. And then we've got to set what we actually want it to do. And what we want it to do is set low power mode. So just give that a little tap, turn low power mode on. And there we go, that's our first automation. And also that lock screen here on the iPhone 16 Pro is more customizable than before. So just unlock the phone, but don't actually swipe up for the desktops. Just long press on the lock screen and then go to customize. As before, of course, you can change up the wallpaper. Now you can also change up the shortcuts that appear down at the bottom of the lock screen. Hallelujah. So you can remove them completely or you can swap them in for something different. It's especially helpful as we can remove the camera shortcut because we can just quick load it with the camera button now. And again, we've got quite a few different options we can replace this with. You can load up any app that you like. Now, one feature on iPhones, which not many people seem to know actually exists, is the ability to download maps for offline use, which is particularly handy if you're going to bugger off into the wilderness for a weekend. A proper bit of countryside where inevitably you'll have sod all mobile signal. And if you find yourself lost, your only other option of finding directions is by asking some beleaguered farmer with a twitchy eye and a pitchfork. So for instance, I'm going to be taking a wee trip to Berlin next week for work. So if we search for Berlin, and you'll see one of the options there is download. Just give that a wee tap and then you can drag this box in and out to capture the exact area that you want. And maps will helpfully tell you down below how big that download is. That'll save you data or a headache if you haven't got any mobile signal. If you need to access your offline maps, just tap your profile pic there and they're all in there. Any American chum should also have access to a trails feature, which is fresh and new for iOS 18. Here in the UK, we can at least create our own custom routes. Just tap create route like so. And then basically you just need to tap places in order to stick them on the route. Just keep on tapping in order to create the walking route. So let's have a little wander down here past this ambulance place via some nice cafes and of course lots of beer places. You can reverse the route, you can have it out and back, or you can close the loop at any point with a quick tap like so. Now another quick iPhone feature that not many people seem to know about but is always worth mentioning is the ass tap. Just head into accessibility in the settings and then scroll down to touch. And if you scroll on down to the bottom, you'll see the back tap option. Now for a double tap, you can have this turn on all kinds of things. I quite like having it to turn on the torch. And as you can see, there are loads and loads of options here. And then as if by magic, with a quick double poke, I can see the light. And with iOS 18, you can actually customize the torch beam as well. You can make it really narrow and focused. You can also select the brightness just by swiping up and down. And then last up for this iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max tips and tricks guide, let's have us some more camera tips. Now the main camera is once again a 48 megapixel shooter, which shoots at 24 megapixels by default. You can actually capture 48 megapixel raw images if you want. To do this, you'll have to head into the camera settings and then you'll want to give formats a tap. In here, as you can see, you can change up the photo capture between 12 and 24 megapixels, but then you can also turn on the Pro Raw format. And as you can see, by default, this shoots Pro Raw Max at up to 48 megapixels. And with that switched on, as you can see, we now have the Raw Max option up there, which you can tap to shoot those 48 meg, nice, clean, crispy images. And if you happen to be a video editor as well, well, back in that format menu, you'll also find the Apple ProRes option, which is great. If you want to capture again, clean footage for post-processing. Speaking of video, inside the camera settings is, again, sadly, where you'll have to change the default shooting modes, which is at full HD by default, but you can bump it up to 4K like so. You can also switch HDR video on or off, depending on how compatible you want it to be. You've got quite a few other features that are worth checking out in there. And because you stumped up a shag load of money on a Pro or a Pro Max iPhone 16, you've got USB 3 support, which can actually record ProRes video direct to an external drive. Something you can't do with the standard iPhone 16 or the iPhone 16 Plus because they use crappy old USB 2. 
And there you have it, my lovelies. That, in a nutshell, is my iPhone 16 Pro and iPhone 16 Pro Max tips and tricks guide. Now, there is a tips app squirreled away there inside of your shiny new Apple blower if you want some more tips and tricks and features. Otherwise, did I miss out your own favourite feature or tip or whatever else? Well, definitely clue me in as to what a massive wanger I am down in the comments below and let us know what your favourite hidden secret tip or trick may be. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a ruddy wonderful rest of the day. Cheers everyone, love you!